first in my mind. And it had to be done. Oh, ah, bless her. <laughs> and uh, with her help, it made number one. You're, of course, Thank you're you. appearing unusually uh, white and clean and ordinary. I did not, not oh, I was always clean, I beg your pardon. He means I mean, hand painted. He's I mean, usually got all sorts of exotic makeups on, haven't you? No, no, no makeup. Well, there's some makeup on, but no more than any of you. No, no. Well, he's expecting to be thrown in the pool. That's why he hasn't got the red stuff. No, on. no. I'm waiting for the pool. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'd, 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 it's nice to actually wear that. Oh, dear. Oh, what God, happened then? Something's thrown in the pool. Oh, <laughs> what was that? Ah, what's coming up? <laughs> <laughs> Now that's Jaws part two. Hello. Now, out of the, out of the. Diana, you haven't met Don. I must call the plumber. You never know what's coming up. These days. <laughs> <laughs> this is Adam. This is Tom. I like the style there. The kind of. What style is that? While you're while you're telling down a bit, while you're telling down a bit, Don, and drying yourself off. So first of all, welcome to you. And she just she's never met you. I've never met Don. There's, oh, there's no. a drink. It's, a lot, it's exciting. You never know who's going to pop up in this pool. As long as it isn't yours, I don't mind. Absolutely. Absolutely not. <laughs> I felt a little underdressed for the occasion, so I brought along just something here. Just to kind of fit in a little better, if I can get it on. What is it? Well, I, I thought it was a black tie do, so I brought all the black tie. That's made all the difference. That's made all the difference. When you were actually training for your Olympic uh, gold medal attempt, how, how many sort of distances did you swim a day when you were well, at the height of your training? We did about 10,000 metres a day and went on to between... 10,000 metres yes. a day? How many miles is that? Well, it's quite a few, I suppose about seven miles, seven right. and a half miles, and we do about yeah. fifty to 60,000 metres uh, a week, so it's quite a lot. And it's oh. an amazing thing, that. The school, we were, we were talking about our school days, because Tom used to be a teacher. Adam has one or two decent words to say about, about I've got school. nothing to say about school. school. I hated every she minute She hated every minute of it. <laughs> you were quite unhappy at school because of your hair, your hair was, were you? Yes, uh, I lost my hair when I was ten years old. I fell from a tree. I was um, doing a kind of physical education class, and I went up to the top of this tree and there's a rope going down to the ground yeah. and I leant out and grabbed it yeah. and swung out like Tarzan of course my hands let go and I fell 18 feet and landed on my lip and uh, the specialists think it's like acupuncture because my whole face became really swollen and a few months later the hair started to fall out and that's obviously severely and deeply embarrassed you yeah. well it was uh, the kind of ball hue and, and things like that yeah. i was at a boarding school at the yeah. time and it, uh, it was hard but there is nothing vicious do you, i mean do you agree you agree with this presumably you did there is nothing so vicious as a crowd of kids oh, who will actually see a situation like yeah. that is that one of the reasons duncan may i ask you why you actually learned to swim so well did you feel that to overcome possibly all the ridicule yeah. and things that you went you had to do something really better than anybody else well i think well, in my case, I was dyslexic too, which is a word blindness. Yeah. And I think what happens is you, you get to a situation where you have a little adversity, and adversity makes or breaks you. So Absolutely. If you get on, we're all living testimony to that. Exactly. <laughs> we're not going to say why, but we all, we all are, aren't we? Indeed. I mean, you've been anorexic, haven't you? Uh, yeah, at one stage in my life. Was that serious? Uh, it is very serious because it's a psychological condition where you think you're you're overweight all the time, yeah. and um, in a way, it's it's slowly killing yourself. Yeah. Straight, it's a very strange. Situation. And how did you pull out of that? Open your mouth and air, really. That was about it. <laughs> but you see, he, I mean, he, uh, uh, Duncan, despite his baldness, used to play a game. So he played a game with a school teacher one day. He put it something yeah, so, yeah. I, I used to wear a wig a lot, oh. and uh, I had a lot of fun with it, actually. It, well, the worst thing about being bald is, is it's not quite socially accepted, especially at that age. So I thought this wig would help me out. And I started wearing it like a hat. But uh, there was one time I went to a church, in fact it was Wells Cathedral, I came out and all the parents and all the boys were there and it caught on a twig and whoo, <laughs> it was left hanging there because of screams and shouts, nobody knew what to do. Right, right. Well, it, I was going to ask uh, Duncan actually, does it affect your shaving? Have you lost the hair here as well? Or? I'm just starting to grow a little bit, just, just now yeah. 14 years and I'm starting How to How old are you now? 24. You could be as hairy as him by the time you're 40. <laughs> how God, do you know how hairy God, I am? Well, I'm just from the top, from the top, <laughs> looking from where, from where I... I dread it. Hair is horrible. You have to shave every morning. 
Well, you have it, it also does, it also, if you are an Olympic swimmer of your standard, it does help you to cut through the water, doesn't it? No, actually, it's funny because all the swimmers shave their whole body before a competition. And it's like getting into clean sheets. It feels good when you shave your body. And of course, it, you swim faster. Right. With me, I have no hair on my body all the year round. So when it comes to a big competition, I don't have anything to shave. You see, he's not prepared for it. He doesn't have to make any preparation. Well, you know the advantage, of course, in 40 years' time, is ideal for the main male lead in Annie. <laughs> <laughs> when it's still running. Yeah. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, every party has a good turn in it. And we've got two, or rather four, legs in harmony. There is a sport, an international sport, called synchronized swimming, and it's extremely demanding physically. The swimmers are forced to wear nose clips on their nose, obviously, or their eardrums will perforate with the pressure. Two British girls are the European champions of this sport. They're Caroline Homeyard and Carolyn Wilson. Oh, Just talk to... Uh, we're being served again. We're being served again. Now then... <laughs> How are you, sir? Very well, Is he here every night as well? Yes. yes. You serve lots of defense people in your time? Yes, have I have indeed. I've lived for some 11 years with various members of the royal family. Royal family? Yes, indeed, yes. Oh. The royal of the Duke and the Duke of Kent and the Duke of Gloucester. In, any members of the, the government of the nation of the world? In a few years, a few years ago, yes. Quite a few have you spilled ago. anything ever on anybody? Uh, yes, I did. And you have to tell the tale, did you? I did, yes. I wouldn't like to repeat it to you, really. You wouldn't like to suggest who it was, would you? Uh, no, not really. You see, <laughs> he, her staff is terribly well trained. As long as he doesn't spill anything on me. As long as he doesn't <laughs> spill the beans, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, he doesn't spill the beans. <laughs> now, listen, Adam, we, uh, I haven't talked to you for a little bit now. Um, you're passionately interested, I understand, in uh, North American Indians. I mean, that's where yeah. you've got one of your uh, ideas for fish. Yeah. Yeah. Do they like you? Well, initially they didn't because uh, they'd seen the old piece lead to the Kings of the Wild Frontier album yeah. and they thought that it was yet another uh, just rip-off of their culture. Yeah. Like, uh, because what annoys them is the, um, the stereotype of North American Indians, uh, the nation. Uh, it's usually like the fact that they're savages and things like that, which is completely the reverse situation. So I got off the plane and the first thing I did when I got to the States was go to the... North American Indian Community Centre in New York City mm. and just turned up there jet lagged and everything and just said look you know it's not like that I said come to the show and if you think that I'm doing that then I'll take the line off and the feathers off and they came and they came and they enjoyed the show and wrote a letter to the record company I'm with and Good. said that they found it Good. acceptable and we've since gone very well we're in Alice Cooper came to see you when you were in America didn't he yeah well I'd l he missed the show. Oh, did he? Well, he came, in but he that, missed the show. That, in order that we don't miss this particular yeah, show, yeah, you told me that we had a special guest. We have this. a surprise guest for you, but I must tell you, before I introduce you to him, Russell, right. everybody here is very elegantly dressed, you know, one way or another, and this guest never, ever takes his clothes off. Really? In other words, he never has to change. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Pringle, the Penguin. Oh! Hello, Mr. Pringle. Well, you have to bring him on. Mr. Pringle, does oh, he, I'm I think Mr. Pringle's you. frightened that I might teach him how to swim. Ron, you're Mr. Pringle's keeper, are you? Yep. Come, come in a bit, will you? Come in a bit. Is he all right with this? Is yeah, he happy? Yeah. Just can you turn him... Fine. Can you... He doesn't bite people, no, does he? Don't no, you keep no. your legs closed in case he bites. <laughs> <laughs> What's, he says how old is he? How old is he? He's about just over a year old. And where is he from? Um, well, the sub of Antarctic animals. We got him from Sweden. I think I ought to, we ought to tell the audience at home. Does he want one of these, do you think? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you ought to tell the on. audience at home one important factor or one important ca characteristic of this particular penguin. He's very um, shy of water. Shy of water? Shy of water. Yeah. So what would happen if he jumped in? No. Um, well, you've got a lifeguard. Yeah. We well, haven't got a lifeguard. We've got two lifeguards at the <laughs> end. Okay, yeah. And he's from uh, Chessington. From Chessington, so, yeah. And he's how old, do you say? Just over a year old. Well, well let's say, let, let, shall we let you walk about a bit now? Yes. Yes. We want to say thank you to, uh, to Mr. Prince. Mr. Just Mr. Prince. Ah. I tell you, if he 
he's, if he's afraid of water, maybe I could get him to do that, you see. <laughs> no, just a minute. No, I, 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 where is that? Just a minute. I've never felt a penguin before. Yeah. Uh, I've had trouble with emu, I'll tell you. But we won't go into that yet. They say if you learn something new every day. Isn't he lovely? He's so soft. Hello. Absolutely. He's beautiful. How do you think he's going to get on with the, with the, the, your thing of us that's behind here? What, my, oh, I've got a macaw behind here. Can we here, see yeah. Diana's macaw behind here? Captain you? Flint is his Captain name. Captain Flint. Named after the parrot in Treasure Island, of course. Captain Flint. I wonder yeah. what would happen if they met. That's, well, do you mean these two? Yeah. That's just one of the treasures that uh, Diana Dawes is swimming for side. Meanwhile, you're going to actually entertain us now, aren't you? Well, I hope to entertain This is the moment yes. where Diana, the ever gracious hostess that she is, leaves her seat and wanders off into the Sunningdale box countryside and get ready to sing for it. Meanwhile, thank you very much for the time being down. Well, let me just say it's a record that I've just made and it comes out next week and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that everybody's going to love it. What a professional you are. Oh! Off on your way. <laughs> Listen, I don't know whether the, I don't know whether this the camera can see the relationship <laughs> that Tom O'Connor has made with Mr. Pringle. Well, it's but it's sticking into your. Uh, can you can you come in? Can you can you see that? It's in my vitals. Um, Absolutely, stopping them. It's doing it? an emu on me. Look, you see. Have you ever acted with animals? And uh, no, no. Uh, this this is the first and possibly the last time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on my foot. <laughs> is it still on your foot? Yes, it's. Uh, I, it's I think it's afraid actually. I, would it be, a, I don't know, would it be afraid of, of the, when they clapped? Why is it taking a shine to you and not like to you? Or, or no, it's, it's a suit. Ah, it's a suit. Very, it's the same suit. Very good. It's the same suit. Very good. It's the same suit. If you don't want to watch it, it thinks you're its auntie. Could be. Or, or uncle. <laughs> or it's a yes. Or well, it's his mother, even. It could be. <laughs> Now, where are you off to, Tom? You're off somewhere tonight. I'm dashing off to Wellingbury, actually, from here, the Fir Tree Restaurant. I hope if you're watching, I'm on my way. Well, I'll, I'll bring Mr. Pringle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then you're off into a pantomime after that. Pantomime in Bristol, yes, which will be nice. Uh, Robinson Crusoe. We could use him on absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You can do, take the parrot with you as well. Yes. Meantime, I suspect that Miss Dinah Dawes is somewhere out in the countryside waiting to sing for us. The song is called Where Did They Go?